Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing the test activities and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 5.2 Risk Management. And as a part of today's tutorial, we'll understand the process of product risk analysis and at the same time, how exactly we can look forward to mitigate them. So in our previous tutorial, we tried understanding the definition and basics about what is a risk and how exactly risk can be managed throughout the life cycle into two different phases. And today uh, we will continue further to understand the process about. However, the process consists of the activities what we have already covered in our previous tutorial. But it, in a nutshell, it will give you a sequential way of how exactly do we make use of different phases and what exactly is the contribution of tester in the same. At the same time, we'll also understand how exactly risk influences our activities and what are those activities. At the same time, we'll also see what exactly are the different actions which we can take in order to mitigate a risk. To get started, the very first thing is the product risk analysis. If you remember, we discussed about two risks, that is project risk and product risk, where project risks are those which are related to the activities of the project and mainly goes with the ownership to the project manager. When it comes to product risk, the testing team is someone who is responsible to mitigate them by conducting appropriate amount of testing. So let's talk about the product risk analysis as a process. When it comes to product risk analysis, from a testing perspective, the goal of product risk analysis is to provide an awareness of the product risk in order to focus the testing effort in a way that minimizes the residual risk or product risk. Now, in simple words, we cannot make a blind statement every time that we can mitigate all the risk. Mitigation is not every time possible. So in general, we always try to make a statement that we try to reduce the level of risk of the residual risk, which means the ones which are remaining at any point of time. So in the beginning of the project, everything is remaining for me. At the end of the project, there might be some risk which you could not mitigate. So we always say the objective of testing is to mitigate uh, as much as possible, which is basically to reduce the level of risk of the residual risk. Also to remind you, product risk is also known as quality risk. Okay, so they both are exactly the same. Uh, that is the synonym of product risk itself. Also to add here, uh, ideally the product risk analysis begins right early in the SDLC. Product risk analysis consists of risk identification and risk assessment, which are the two major phases. When it comes to risk identification, it is about generating a comprehensive list of risk, which can involve a very wide and broad range of stakeholders. Now here, stakeholders can identify risk by using various techniques and tools. Some of the techniques include brainstorming, workshops, interviews, or cause effect diagram. So in fact, there are many other ways to do it. There are several techniques which we can employ in order to identify the best list of risk possible but all these will be deep dived again when you come to the advanced level. At foundation, we are just keeping it to the point and a simple introduction. On the other hand, if I talk about the risk assessment, this involves categorization of identified risk, determining their risk likelihood, impact, in turn, the combination of impact and likelihood becomes the level of risk, then we prioritize them and propose ways to handle them. Categorization helps in assigning mitigation action because usually, risks falling into the same category can be mitigated using the similar approach. So we do understand that if we don't categorize a risk, we might be every time utilizing our time to determine how to mitigate them. Given that we can categorize some of the risk into one particular category, I may reuse the action items or the mitigation actions what I've defined for one of them, one of them into the same category. So that's where it basically becomes very crucial and important to categorize the risk together and make use of the existing defined action items to that of the other ones. Also to deal with uh, when it comes to the residual risk, which basically talks about any item which is remaining, I consistently keep looking at what are those things. So taking a quick example here, that what could be the classification of risk, for example, Things which are related to design, I can categorize them to make it together. If I'm talking about the risk related to coding or programming errors, I can categorize them together. 
or risk related to any other attribute like performance, security, I may categorize them together. But there would be some more deep dive. I'm just giving you a high level example that what did I mean by saying categorization. Also to add here, a risk assessment can use a quantitative or qualitative approach or mix of them as well. Now here in quantitative approach, the risk level is calculated as the multiplication of likelihood and impact. Whereas in qualitative approach, the risk level can be determined using risk matrix. So both of these are going to be deep dived at the advanced level. And right here, we do not have them into our context. So that's where just the name would be enough, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative is multiplication of likelihood and impact, whereas qualitative is more a matrix which determines the level of risk. Well, when it comes to determining how exactly the risk identification influences testing activities, if you remember when we spoke about test planning factors influences, that is what are those factors which can influence the test plan or test process, uh, we had one of the items called as risk as well right and risk register is the list of risk whatever you find in your project and product so certainly identification of risk do influence my test process the intensity the amount of testing the time allocated the prioritization of the test execution and various other factors please <clears throat> keep correlating the topics to that of what you have already covered if you remember in the test execution schedule we told you that risk is one of the way by which we can uh, prioritize our test cases same way, one of the key objectives of testing is to uh, prioritize uh, or re remove or mitigate the risk as much as possible. So there are different chapters talking about the risk again and again. So make sure that you have those dots connected very well. Now let's talk about the influence of the risk on testing process. So <clears throat> product risk analysis may influence the thoroughness and scope of testing. Its results are used to determine the scope of testing to be carried out, determine the particular test level and propose the test types to be performed, determine the techniques to be employed and the coverage to be achieved, estimate the effort required for each task, prioritize testing in attempt to find the critical defects as early as possible, and determine whether any other activity in addition to testing could be employed uh, to reduce the risk. In simple words, we do not blindly select the test levels or test types to be conducted. If you think conducting non-functional would help you better mitigate this risk, you must employ them. At the same time, if you think making use of equivalence partition or boundary value analysis as techniques could help you derive better test cases, then you must make use of them. At the same time, when we talk about conducting the amount of testing or prioritizing the test in order to find defect early, would be another benefit or another way by which I can look forward to mitigate the risk or reduce the level of risk early in the life cycle. And last, that's one more important thing to talk about, that it's not something that only testing activities which you know can only be used in order to mitigate a risk. If you think hiring a risk consultant can help you find things better or recommend you steps better, hire them. If you think attending a workshop related to risk of your industry practices would help you understand better, then do that, right? So seminar workshops or implementing something new which you have never done before or hiring a consultant in your organization to help you better can be another set of activities what I can really perform in order to get better grip on what I'm doing, right? And that's where we say that a risk assessment outcome or product risk analysis outcome can influence my testing in different ways. Finally, the last action item here is to talk about the last step that is product risk control. Now, product risk control is not that generic word that how can we control a risk. We cannot control a risk, to be frank, or we cannot stop a risk to happen. But point being made here is how do you keep an eye and consistently take care of the corrective and those guiding actions, what can be taken in order to make sure that every single risk is in your context and doesn't go missing or missed out. So when it comes to product risk control, it basically comprises of all measures that are taken in response to identified and assessed product risk, where product risk control consists of risk mitigation and risk monitoring. When it comes to risk mitigation, of course, these are all that steps what you can take in order to uh, mitigate the risk, and which includes uh, implementing the action proposed in risk assessment to reduce this risk level, the aim of risk monitoring is to ensure that the mitigation actions are effective, to obtain further information to improve risk assessment, 
and to identify any kind of emerging risk. At this point, we would just like to let you know that risk assessment or risk uh, product risk analysis is not a one-time activity. To a certain extent, during the beginning of the project, we may not have all that visibility, all that information, what we might need in order to identify the risk very potentially. But later, as the project unfolds, as more details comes into picture, and as the product comes right in front of you getting built up, you may have more information with you. Thus, risk identification or risk assessment is a more of like continuous activity. Like every single milestone, you must conduct it repeatedly to make sure that any new identified risk have occurred or not, right? Because initially, you may not have all the information what you may need to identify all possible risk areas. So thus, it should be a consistent activity. And that's where we call this phase as risk monitoring, which is to keep identifying new items or sometime other way around as well. That means maybe the risk what you identified is no longer a risk. Okay, so to further add here, of course, uh, with respect to the product risk control, once a risk has been analyzed, several response options to risk are possible. For example, risk mitigation by testing, risk acceptance, risk transfer, or contingency plan. Now, here, the four different items certainly talk about four different things. One, you, you have understood the risk and you have some action items to do in order to mitigate the risk. So one, you can mitigate a risk. Given that, you can do it. Second is acceptance, which means that you understand the risk, but you cannot do anything about it. And that's acceptance or more of things like act of, act of God, right? Act of God, like, you know, thunder strong. There's a risk. It can impact a, a city a lot, people a lot. They can kill people, but still you accept the risk because there's no way you can mitigate it, right? You only have the contingency plan, right? You can, all you can have is that. And then, of course, the transfer risk is option where you identify a risk, but you realize that it's not you or your team who can handle it better, but someone else can handle it better. For example, if you perceive a performance risk and you are a functional tester, then you can certainly transfer the ownership of this risk to the performance testers or performance team. And contingency is certainly about the preventions, securing it as much as possible. So in a shopping mall, having a, you know, fire extinguisher, a security guard, and all those steps what you take to prevent fire, prevent theft, is all contingency for it. So we have four options as and when a risk is identified, either mitigate it or accept it, or take a contingency plan to prevent it to happen because maybe happening would be more expensive than preventing it, which we always know, or transfer it to the right team. Don't try to save it yourself, okay? Also to add further, uh, action that can be taken to mitigate the product risk by testing are as follows, which includes some of the things what we just discussed in our previous topic, but still, uh, select the testers with the right level of experience and skills suitable for a given risk type, apply an appropriate level of independent of testing, uh, conduct reviews and perform static analysis, apply the appropriate test techniques and coverage tools, apply the appropriate test types, addressing the affected quality characteristic, or perform dynamic testing, including regression testing. That means do all that which you think can help you mitigate the risk at any point of time. Okay, that's an outcome of mitigation or mitigation action, which I can take in order to mitigate a known or identified risk. So that's all from the risk mitigation point, risk management point of team. I hope you got a really good understanding of that. So we will be having more details in the advanced level. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.